What's up guys, what up James here, and today we're looking at the colonists on the Nintendo Switch. In the middle of the 21st century, through advances in robotics and artificial intelligence, scientists have developed self-aware robots capable of simulating human needs for sustenance and shelter. Instead of a future of service, one group of robots set out to make a new life for themselves. Setting out for a new world, they take command of a rocket ship setting out in the solar system in search of a new home. And that's about it for the story, as the game is played out through a sequence of ever-changing levels. There are a few different game modes in the colonists to choose from. There is a campaign mode, which goes through a series of levels that get harder as you progress and unlock new features and upgrades as you proceed through your journey. The challenges let you play through a few different sequences designed to give you specific tasks, building boats, researching technologies, and collecting resources. The challenges give you more laid back style of gameplay and a sandbox mode, which lets you choose a map to play from a decent sized list and lets you customize the play style as you see fit. I found the challenges to be a little more accessible for pick up and play due to them being shorter than the campaign missions. In the sandbox mode, there are times when you just want to sit back and chill out and not be rushed. The Colonist is a single player game only, so no matter what mode you pick, you will be going at it solo. There is a good amount of depth to the game and somewhat of a learning curve, but the campaign starts you out with a rather decent tutorial, teaching you how to navigate the options wheel and other basic commands of the game. The tutorial is very helpful, but you need to stay on top of things. The tutorial can be replayed if you're having any problems. The colonist is full of things to do. You will be mining several resources like iron, stone, and coal, harvesting wood for construction, and upgrading various buildings as the levels progress. The controls can be a little finicky at times. I found it better to zoom in when building roads and placing buildings. The game does have good camera controls, allowing you to zoom in and out or tilt the camera according to your preference. The menus are easy to navigate. They are quick to pull up and can be accessed within seconds by pressing the ZL button. The researching is done at the workshop, allowing you to build more complex buildings the colony will need for advancement. You can unlock new areas of the map by placing watchtowers near the borders of your colony. Upon doing so, you can reach new resources that were previously out of reach. There is even harbors and shipyards. These will be required for creating ships to travel across the waterways and access new islands where different materials may be located. You will need to upgrade buildings to progress the status of your colony. Every building has a set type and amount of resources you will need to collect. You will need to plan your buildings and roads to not cause buildup in resources and slow down the robot's ability to transverse the colony. It does sometimes become a little hard to keep up with all the building requirements but it's never nothing you can't manage. You can check the advisor at any time in your options wheel to see what task you need to be working on next. I would advise trying to focus on one thing at a time and only use the priority option one by one. If you set too many things as priority, it can end up causing a complete standstill. As I was learning the game, I ran into this problem several times. A couple of times for up to 10 minutes while I tried to figure out where the problem was. This can be avoided if you don't get in too much of a rush. I did find that as the missions got longer, which they are pretty long from the beginning, that I was just sitting there as my robots were running around delivering materials, which lead to a lot of idle screen time. As the missions get longer, the more times this will be the scenario. I even found myself watching the Indie Gaming Guild as some of these waits can be long. What's up, Jeffrey? This isn't a bad game by any means. Just couldn't hold my attention as much as a game like this should. It's really not a bad game, guys. But I'm not sure how much more time I will be putting into it. The game is fun to play. Just had a little too much idle time for my liking. There is many hours of gameplay to be had. Well guys, that's a quick look at the colonists on the Nintendo Switch. If you liked this video or found it helpful, drop a like. It really helps out my channel. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time guys. Later.